come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. This is all, of course, in our quest for total world domination. And you can help us out with that by hitting that like or subscribe button or writing a review. All of that stuff helps us get found by other folks like you who are interested in the same kind of crazy crap that you're into. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Holly. Michaela, John, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. <laughs> Should I just start shouting everything like four <laughs> seconds beforehand? Holly, <laughs> yeah. Holly finished off. Holly finished off her night trilogy uh, tonight. Holly, what nice little family drama did we watch? Uh, we finished off the night hat trick with Night Beast. Night the other movies, the they, they, these are not uh, related in any way other than they have no, night in the all. title. They're just all, all, just all movies start, they have the word night. So it was Night Killer, Night Claws, and now Night Beast. This was a, we this should a, all three rank these at the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah! Right. Best to worst. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll have to do that. You have to remember that for uh, ranking the, uh, the trifecta of night terrors. Um, so what year was this movie go. made? 1982. And it was directed by Don Doler. Who we would know from. Um, you might not know him, <laughs> but he did mm. other movies, uh, The Alien Factor, Alien Factor 2, The Alien Rampage, and Blood Massacre and Fiend are some of his repertoire. Please Don tell me he used this monster for all those movies. <laughs> well, <laughs> that this, would be great. Well, I got to say, uh, this is kind of an unofficial sequel to Alien Factor and Alien Factor 2. <laughs> so, oh, Jesus. I mean, yes and no. I, I don't think this particular monster, I honestly don't know much about the other two, but from what I've read about this movie, um, this monster was created for this movie. So I don't know that he, I don't know the monster appears in Alien Factor or Alien Factor. I think it's the, the sheriff maybe, or uh, it's a lot of the cast. I think Yeah, it's the cast. There's, yeah. There's, oh, yeah. There's the humans that appear in the other movies as the same Include, characters. They have the same, yeah. the same character Dick name. Diesel. Right. Yeah. Well, we got to talk about him at some point too. Um, yeah, this is uh Dick Doler or sorry. Uh, Don Doler is, um, like this movie is we're talking we keep coming back to these like regional horror movies or regional movies and this guy is like yeah. a guy you know because uh, to me it's like uh, filmmakers who started out making <laughs> super eight movies in their backyard and then got a 35 millimeter camera and did the exact same thing <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah it's, just it's upgrading the, equipment talent it's the, Do stays it's the, the same. dawson leary effect they yeah. just keep making backyard movies yeah well there's something endearing about that you know it's like uh instead of going to hollywood to pursue your dream you're just like you have your crew you know of people a crew right it's friends and family at the end of this yeah. movie there's a thank you list of all the people's houses that they shot in mr and mrs <laughs> smith mr mm -hmm. and mrs so and so yeah That's um the uh the female cop in this movie is his aunt's hairdresser <laughs> like it's very much like I, I loved reading about this because he was talking about how he cast his aunt's hairdresser and then they went back to do reshirts to reshoots to add more to the movie. So he literally had to go to his aunt's hairdresser and be like, hey, could you do a nude scene? Okay, cool. And like with <laughs> with Mark Twain, imagine? would you mind? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? I can't. Yeah. How does wh where does your relationship with her go after that? You know, right. like, how do you just pretend like that didn't happen for the rest of your life? Maybe, maybe uh, I, re I remember like my mom's hairdresser and I would not ask her to be naked. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a situation that he's like, well, I can't ask my hairdresser because then I have to go to a new one. So I got to ask my aunt. 
Yeah, and plus this is a different era that we're talking about where we're coming out of the free love sure. 60s and through the 70s. And, uh, you mm-hmm. know, there is like, a, I, I guess the reason you're saying that there were reshoots was because the producers were like, you know, you got your wholesome little alien massacre movie or alien on the rampage movie. We need to spice it up for, you know, our yeah. distributor. We're going to need some TNA here. So, <laughs> yeah. And they're also going to need to be like, this movie's only 55 minutes. We need to put some more stuff in here to like pad out the time. <laughs> right. Anybody got a hairdresser? that wants to get naked <laughs> well uh don doler he's kind of an interesting cat like uh he is he does have some renown in the the world of uh super low budget filmmaking i mean john waters is a fan mm-hmm. uh john waters of course is also baltimore's favorite film son these guys are like george romero was in pittsburgh yeah. and then you had uh these yeah, guys you, are- you were saying that this is like a regional movie it was shot in baltimore this is a baltimore movie so much so that like one of the taglines for this movie is the sci-fi thriller made in baltimore that's <laughs> one of the taglines i love that kind of pride behind something like this though yeah. like right. i do that is something i do love about john waters movies is that he like loves his hometown and employs it as much as possible yeah. I mean, it's yeah, I, I get it. It's one of those things like I've always been kind of proud that Wizard of Gore was filmed at a place that Colin and I worked at, you know, like, yeah. I think that's awesome. <laughs> How come that hasn't been on the freak show yet? Wait, it's have been we on done, my list. It's been on my list. <laughs> have we done any Herschel Gordon Lewis movies? I don't think so. No, this is an oversight. So. He was the Midwest's uh, version of this, right? The uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I do not want to watch Driller. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Abel Ferrara. That's oh, Abel Ferrara. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, the other one yeah well he was he was new york's regional guy right yeah <laughs> right. Or right. one yeah. of yeah um but doler as far as i was uh reading up on him apparently uh you know obviously as a kid he was making super eight millimeter movies uh he decided that he wanted to get into filmmaking did you, did you hear this story holly yeah yeah he was working um he was working uh on pay uh, for payroll and at this bank that he worked at, two gunmen came in to rob the bank, and one of them pointed a shotgun at the back of his head, and that experience made him go, I want to make movies. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, like fuck that. That's a, a takeaway. <laughs> right, that's, that's a moment what's your life of clarity. Look like? Yeah. Right. What's your You're life just like, look like? I can see I everything right now. <laughs> I should not be working at a bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, he was also the creator of a magazine. The, wait, that's the Fight Club thing, isn't it? That's the Fight Club way of, of making movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, guy, the guy is like, you're going to go to school. <laughs> well, he I was a- thinking it's like um, um, the, the, the death treatment from What About Bob? Well, does anyone know what I'm talking about? I can't remember. I forgot. I don't remember that movie at the very like, end of the, at the, towards remember. the end of the movie. Richard Dreyfuss is like leading him out to the middle of the woods to blow him up, and he's calling it like death therapy or something. Do you remember this? Vaguely, vaguely. I haven't oh seen that in a while. So long. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. I, I remember Baby Steps. That's all I got. All right, you guys need to watch one about Bob again. It's genius. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a life uh, life changing life changing event, I guess for for this guy. Um, I was saying he also made a, a magazine called Cinemagic. Uh, this uh, was basically a magazine that was devoted to um, it, it was like kind of geared toward amateur filmmakers by showing like how special effects were done in movies. But it would also have like recipes and the tools and like how you could make your own uh, like movie quality special effects. I remember this cause it was bought yeah. by the star log company. You know, they had Fangoria and star log and several, but they had Cinemagic, And I remember an issue which was like devoted to how to make like an elasto stretch, uh, transformation head for like, you know, from American werewolf in London. It was like, here's how you could do it yourself. So Don Dohler was the, uh, the guy who created that um, magazine. That, I mean, that's so that's so awesome because you know that it was a situation that he's like, I'm making my backyard movies and I want to know how to do these things. So once he started figuring it out, he's like, I'm going to tell the other people that are making backyard movies how to do it. Yeah, he's and like a, a man of the people for independent guy. filmmakers. Or yeah, and yeah. he apparently attracted some uh, top tier talent through Cinemagic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> such as. Uh, well, I don't know if you noticed in the credits, uh, sound and music was done by uh, Jeffrey Abrams. Does that ring any bells? Mm, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Abrams. What's, what's Jeffrey's his, middle name? Yeah. 
Yeah. This was his first movie. He was like 15 or 16 years old and did the sound for this movie. So he That's did all pretty the music. dope. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because this was oh, the no. kind of, I mean, you know, like a Don Coscarelli or something. This is what we're talking about. It's like these guys just kind of were like, we're making movies. You know, 15-year-old kid writes into the magazine, says, I want to make movies. And you're like, well, let's give the 15-year-old kid a shot. I mean, that is kind of, you know. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, the, that's the romance of filmmaking. Something yeah. like that. That's just. Yeah. It's like an era, but that's the thing. It's like these movies could actually be seen by people. It's like now I think once digital filmmaking came along and everybody could make them, there's like a massive glut of, uh, of films. And that's the thing we don't see as much as you, you know, you can, cause it's impossible in a lifetime. You wouldn't be able to watch all these things. Yeah. Um, yeah. but back then it was like, you could make a movie like this and it would actually get some kind of distribution. Um, so this movie Night Beast. Uh, Night Beast. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, basically what we're talking about here, I guess in broad strokes, is it's a movie about an alien. Uh, well, how, how would you even describe <laughs> He's an alien serial killer, an alien uh, slasher. I mean, he kind of, yeah, it, it's hard. An alien it's soldier. Hard to, it's hard to pinpoint a genre for this. Like, would you call it a slasher movie? I don't know. I, I don't know that I would call it a slasher movie, but it does feel that way in some parts, you know? Yeah. Cause it has the gore of a slasher movie and the, the yeah. alien has no motivation other than he kills people. He crash yeah. lands. There's a scene at the beginning with like all these little model. We get to see like the model ship as it collides with an asteroid and spins off towards earth. And it, you know, the heat shield lights up as it goes through the atmosphere. And Sean's like, this looks like a 1950s movie, but I'm like, yeah, but this is still better than what you can do in your backyard. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Uh, I really, I, there was a lot of this movie that you could tell where his influences came from. Like I was reading that for, you know, 20 years or something, every Saturday he'd go to his local theater and watch like old fifties creature feature movies. And I'm like, I, you see that in this movie for sure. Right. But Colin, when you see that a movie was made in 1981 and it opens with 1950s level, you know, sci-fi graphics, that's when you're kind of like, okay, wait, well, is this I, yeah, a really cheap movie or was this yes. made in, or was this is a period piece, you know? I, yeah, like, but I, don't, I don't think that was, uh, I don't think that was fifties uh, quality. I actually think that was, cause if you look at like Battlestar Galactica at the time, I was, it looks like, but it looks like that. I mean, that was like, you know, almost contemporary, not star Wars level. That was, that was the a game. Right. I, I would say maybe it's contemporary if you have no money. Yes. But Which I they think didn't. for yeah. 81, like, come on, that looks dated for 81. I feel like star but crash as as- was like 79 and that looked better than the star crash. <laughs> <laughs> that looked better than star crash. You're crazy. <laughs> okay. Star right. crash is a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> I would describe the genre of this movie as home movie that's its genre home it's that's home, the genre. Movie. home. <laughs> takes place in a lot of homes this is a cousin to blood beat another movie well, that that, and it picked. just feels like a movie you'd make <laughs> in the backyard with your cousins again yeah. kind of was. you guys bring similar movies to the show i bring and i get railed against <laughs> um this is different <laughs> Well, it is different. There's a well, yeah. Maybe we'll have to talk because Sean brought but blood beat, and I do. I was thinking about that. You know, we watched that around Christmas time. You'll have to go back and check out. That was shot in uh, Wisconsin, um, but there are some there are some differences. Just and I think the audiences that they were trying to appeal to. Um, this one is exploitation, right? Blood beat's a little <laughs> more like going for art house weird horror or something, but like you don't have any money mm-hmm. and you're smoking a lot of dope. <laughs> or they were on psychedelics in that movie, right? He was right, like, yes. <laughs> I took an acid trip and I came up with this awesome movie, and you're like, uh, what what's happening now? There's this. <laughs> um so this alien, like uh, your classic 1950s era sci-fi, crashes to Earth, lands in uh, out the outskirts of Mar- somewhere in Maryland, right? Mm-hmm. In the woods where there are hunters. And within, I don't know, five minutes of landing, this guy has laid waste to... I mean, like, this thing just was moving. I was like, what, are we going to get a plot here? Do we need one? What happens in this opening uh, setup? Yeah, you get, he has like a solid, like 15 person kill count in the first like 10 minutes of this movie. You know, he just crashes and just starts shooting him up, which I'm not going to lie. I kind of dug it. I thought it was fun. (laughs) Um, 
we've talked about movies before that just kind of jump in without storyline. And I was like, I kind of like doing that sometimes. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah, but yeah, especially because it keeps, uh, it keeps you on your toes. If you're just starting yeah. off right there, you're just like, whoa, you got to pay attention to this. I feel yeah. like this movie has like total, like 20 to 25 minutes of just shooting. Probably. Screen. Like <laughs> definitely. It's a lot. Probably. It yeah. Is a lot. yeah. If you were just to cut all that together, but in the beginning we get <laughs> alien ray gun shooting, uh, yeah. Well, actually, Holly, tell us what's uh, what describe this monster for the listeners at home. This monster, I mean, at, while we were watching it, we compared it to Rawhead Rex. Um, uh. I just the just the general design of it also reminded me of of one of the uh, creatures in Super Mario Brothers a little bit. Um, <laughs> Goombas, the Goombas, Goombas yeah. yeah. It ran, reminded me of the Goombas a little bit. Um, it looks like a bad Ninja Turtles villain. Like a really bad one. Yeah, definitely, really it's bad. definitely a rubber suit monster for sure. Yeah, it's a rubber suit. Like mask. live action turtles show bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got lots of teeth, which are always, oh, you know, its eyes are always, or sorry, its mouth's always open, showing its teeth. In one shot, I think you get to see some articulation there where it mm-hmm. works. But for the most part, it's a it's a rubber mask that this guy's wearing. Yeah. But, I mean, he's a human. And rubber right? hands. Oh, that's right. He's got his li- lizard yeah. hands and a red. I like Red skin. I like that. It, like it sleeves are rolled up, so you can see its lizard arms. <laughs> it's like, like a Miami Vice style. I was like, you don't like get that he, all the time. He's kind of like a style and alien. <laughs> <laughs> but he was like a silver suit he was wearing, right? I know. I Is think that because he's, he's like probably, from space? Yeah. I think. Yeah. So. I think he was. I think he's probably really fly where he comes from. <laughs> <laughs> right. And if you were that fly where you came from and ended up on Earth, wouldn't you be a little pissed off? Right? That's why he's shooting That's everybody. Why he's shooting everybody. He's like, I'm the badass where I come from, losers. Like, he's like the high He's really school. juvenile. He's like, <laughs> That's this is his equivalent of like smacking books out of people's hands. He's the high school bully. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, it's Swirly. Great. He's in like a, yeah, I mean, the silver, because that's what, you know, spacemen wear is these shiny silver suits uh, yeah. as he's wandering around. It reminded me of another movie called uh, Without Warning, I think, that came from the same uh, time period, which is the guy who looks almost the same with a little bit bigger of a budget. Um, so he uh, we do get to meet like a cast of characters as we're sorting through because he he comes in. Well, his laser ray um which is like pew, 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 right, and it's shooting lasers, mm-hmm. and, but it vaporizes people, much like the uh, the death ray from War of the Worlds was what I thought of, because it hits yeah. you, you you glow red, and then you vanish, and then there's just like a tarry, you know, outline of you on the ground. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, this is my favorite version of an alien ray gun. I don't like it when they just get shot and fall down. I want yeah. them to light up and disappear. I like this one because it's like they glow red, and then there's like the He Man sparkles. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like this one. <laughs> um, he uh, eviscerates a couple people. I think we had a couple early gore effects. Uh, the the dad who left his two kids in the car to get out to go take a leak ends up with like an eyeball hanging out of his head. Um, mm-hmm. It looks pretty which, cool. That was pretty cool. And we have talked about before, like we appreciate a movie that's not afraid to kill kids. There you go. You just add yeah. another one to our Good list, right? Me. Did it get them because kinda... they ran away and ran over to uh, the guy who looked like Eric Bogosian? Or uh, who are you saying he looked they like? They ended the... up in the car. They ended up and in the, the car, car got evaporated. evaporated. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they eventually did, right? Because they went to the yeah. other dude's house, the guy who was like making out with his girlfriend. And then he's like, you know, she's like, yeah. it sounds like there's someone running toward the house. He's like, ah, don't worry about it. You got to get out there and, and check it. He's like, oh, okay, what? baby. And he takes the shotgun out to the porch. Then he gets what sort of supernatural <laughs> power does he she have? She's like, someone's running towards the house. Uh, this may be like the house over from Blood Beat at this point. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good. She's got super hearing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And he definitely looked like a cross between Jerry Seinfeld and Howard from the Big Bang Theory. And then Sean, what was your added to Paul that? Stanley? Paul Stanley, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he gets uh didn't he get the the knife or the fingers in the neck or whatever? He got, his he got guts. In, the, in the gut. Yeah. His gut, his guts yeah. Ripped out. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He literally like, four, shoved his four, hand in his stomach minutes. and was like, yeah. <laughs> While the solid. woman was screamed great. for five minutes straight, it was like a word for <laughs> the longest sustained scream in a movie I think I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, that scene was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so this, of course, uh, uh, alerts the, the officialdom 
of this small hamlet, which is uh, led by Sheriff Jack Cinder. Uh, Great name. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and Jack he Cinder. is uh, tasked with waking his partner, or sorry, the deputy sheriff. Is it Tina? What was her name? Lisa. Sorry. Lisa. You know, because of course she's off sleeping because it's not her shift, right? We got to get everybody up because this thing has crashed on the horizon and it's on it's on fire. Didn't wake up the campers. I love that too. The, the thing lands. Heavy sleeper. They had a long day hunting. They they were out. Yeah. I like how his his line when he called when he was going to call her was like, "She's used to des- a desk job. I'm not going to wake her." I was like, "She's a deputy. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? She's a cop." <laughs> And the only other one you have, right? Yeah, well, and that you. dude, but that dude <laughs> well, is expendable. Cop, though. No, no, the guy who pulled up in the car, I think, was the deputy. But when the All first right. the first line of guys who go out to you know investigate this uh, you know this thing, it's the sheriff and like his deputies and the townsfolk all head out there. Or the, or, sorry, it's the the other campers. An intergalactic war erupts where they're <laughs> shooting at the thing and we don't see like any impacts or anything, but like we're like 10 minutes into the movie and there's lasers flying all over the place. Things are exploding. People are being zapped and disappearing. And I'm like, what the holy hell is going yeah. on? It's exciting. Yeah. It is. <laughs> he loses that deputy, uh, the sheriff, Sheriff Sanders. And so then, uh, you know, tail between his legs, he heads back to the station because that's what you do. I mean, there's a killer alien running around, just vaporized half the townspeople. You're like, maybe once the sun comes up, we'll have a better chance of uh, finding this creature. And we're going to stop. Right. It. There I is mean, no sense of urgency it. with any of these people. I've never no. seen an entire movie <laughs> where their facial expressions never change, no matter what they're saying. No I've kidding. never seen that before. Holy shit. <laughs> There's an alien. He's murdering people. <laughs> Did you notice they turn to the camera a lot too, like a soap opera? Like I feel like these people just needed to be aware of where the camera was in order to perform, but they would always kind of turn to like face it before they said something. Yeah, <laughs> like like a cat or a dog when they're always checking to make sure you're still there. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We'll go back to what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, uh, I think our two, uh, there's three main protagonists. So we got, uh, we got Sheriff Cinder. We Mm -hmm. have, uh, Lisa, Deputy Lisa, and we have, uh, Jimmy. Was it Jimmy? Jamie. 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 I'm not sure who he is, but he's a townsfolk. uh, Good old boy. Seems to have like, uh, he knows everybody and he's like, we have to evacuate this town right now. And the sheriff agrees. And so that's the plan that they come up with. It's like the killer alien. Get everybody out of the town. There's going to be a mass evacuation. We got to clear this with the mayor. And this is where <laughs> Jaws level uh, town politics come into play. Because um, the mayor is hosting a swanky party tonight at his pool for the party governor. Party is generous. Uh, yeah, a sexy get together. This qualifies as a party. <laughs> a, yeah. what? a sassy get together. A sexy get together. A sexy get together. There's a lot of swimwear involved. Um, there but, was no food at this party. It was literally just people standing around a pool. <laughs> yeah, it was like nothing to indicate an actual party. Yeah, this was the this was the party for the governor. Yeah, like if you have, the, I figured if you have the governor, like my movie experience, if you have the governor over, you have like a major like four course meal dinner party, like a big like a string quartet. You know, it's like fancy and shit. This is like a swinger party with no food and a at a pool. Yeah, and like, did you notice that it's like dirt around the pool too? Yeah. Like, it's not even paved oh, really? or there's grass. It was like dirt around. I the pool. I thought there was. Yeah. They had like a swanky wooden uh, deck out there, but maybe that was the other side of it, closer to the house. They, they had a deck, but it like they didn't have like you didn't put some some sod down or something like some flowers, nothing. No, it was just they, dirt. They had yeah. The her pool lawn installed. chair was straight up sitting in dirt. They had the pool installed because the governor was coming over. That's why he's like, I'm not fucking <laughs> right. evacuating this place. God damn it. The mayor is played yeah. by uh, that's Dick. Uh, what's his name? Dick uh, Diesel. No, was it? Yeah. It, it's it's spelled D Y S Z E L. That is yeah. Diesel to me. All right. So this guy is Dick Diesel. Dick Diesel. Yeah. Dick Diesel. I don't know, but anyway, he was uh, <laughs> famously. Some of our audience may know him as because uh, uh, the career that he had. He was a, like a TV news broadcaster, but he's also known as the late night horror movie host Count Gore Duvall. 
not Gore Vidal, Gore Duvall, who hosted oh horror movies and still apparently, I don't know if he still does, but he does convention appearances now. Yeah. So <laughs> you get that's how you get publicity for your movie. <laughs> right? You have the newsman actually on your show or mm-hmm. uh, in your movie. Genius. <laughs> um so this uh so the the evacuation we never actually see the bulk of the movie takes place as uh the sheriff and the other well-wishing uh well-meaning townsfolk try to uh either contain the monster because we got to get fred or george or whatever his name is the guy who with the crack shot the old guy who they're gonna you just bring name in. two weasley twins <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what you just did <laughs> Right. This is like they get him up there and they're like, we're going to go hunt this beast. And they're like, uh, OK, you're a crack shot. You're going to be able to knock the. We need his ray gun because as long as he's got that ray gun, we're no match for him. I want you to shoot that gun out of his hand. And the guy's son is like, why don't you just blow his head off, dad? I was like, well, get the ray gun first and then we'll take care of blowing his head off. You can do that. Can you? This is all great. Of course, he's a crack stuff. shot. Yeah, he does manage to get the ray gun out of the guy's out of the alien's hand. What happens to that? Ray well, what gun? happens? It gets uh, blown to the side. It's all smoky and broken. Okay, so it took and then a bullet. that that's that. Yeah, it took a bullet. It looks like, and then that was yeah. There was no uh, in the. I guess they couldn't afford uh, a sh- uh, uh, they couldn't afford this one bullet sound effect apparently because like in the cutting nothing happened. It just cuts to the gun <laughs> flying away from his hand. I know. I was waiting for the twenty shot minutes of, of gunshots. You know, you got to have that close up. I'm doing it for you right now on the camera. You just have like right. old old uh, Earl going. <laughs> Right, and you gotta have like the music get to a crescendo right before he shoots it. Nothing. It was oh uh, no. Yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, Mister Jeffrey Abrams. Uh, your sound design sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's fifteen years old. We'll cut him some slack now. It was uh, okay. Um, That's fine. But there's a big emotional component to this scene because uh, Earl's son Bobby uh, gets liquidated by the alien, and so there are all In mid-air. These, yeah. I know. Well, are you su- are you surprised? This fucking sheriff has civilians running out to the front lines while him and his deputies stand behind a wall. What kind of sheriff does that? Not a good sheriff. Not a good sheriff. He's like Earl knows what he's doing, and Bobby must know what he's doing too. Bobby gets zapped, and then there's like you get the dramatic close ups. I love that of all the cast reacting to Bobby getting <laughs> zapped. Uh, it, it like, slowly did it slowly get quicker as or was that in the ending at certain points <laughs> like when the big moments coming they cut to the close-ups of the characters like re, like it speeds up and everything it's yeah pretty fun uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty good um i mean in a bad kind of way but entertaining uh-huh. um so now that the alien is disarmed then that means it's going to go wandering through the village or the con- countryside just killing people at random and that's yeah. not enough to sustain our movie. We also have a couple of subplots. One of them involves the uh, doctor and his wife, right? Who are uh, trying to investigate the alien and how it, you know, find out some way to stop it. Um, and the second subplot involves a biker named Drago who, and like a domestic abuse uh, sub subplot but Jesus. that goes on for a while um okay so which one of these you want to tackle first let's let's get wish let's get domestic abuse like, out of the way yeah <laughs> all right so Drago, i really wish i had taken notes of their exchange in the woods because that dialogue was just magic <laughs> oh he hates cops which you know He's probably he he might be justified. In oh that. yeah, it's hard to have know we, with this character. <laughs> have we said how we were introduced to our uh, Drago, our Drago? No, tell us. Uh, he we're in the middle of the woods. Uh, who's out there? The the two cops, the sheriff and the deputy, Lisa and uh, Mark Twain. And out of yep. nowhere, in the and I'm talking like middle of deep woods <laughs> where no motorcycles should be. This dude comes racing up and look like looking like a full asshole, like yeah, leather jacket, sunglasses. just a uh, Fu Manchu. Uh, mustache. He's got sunglasses on. He's a ginger, so it's all bad. And this is not this is not like a dirt bike. This is like a Harley. Like yeah. this is not meant <laughs> yeah. for like off roading. Yeah, he's driving over logs as he gets to where he's <laughs> supposed to go. <laughs> yeah, then he's like taunting the cop. You know, uh, it's great. He goes. <laughs> he's like, yeah, sit on it, cop. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and he's got some sick burns for this cop. Oh, that was the, uh, yeah, because the doctor was there and he's like, I wish you'd arrest him. Right. And he's like, I right. don't want to stink up my jail. <laughs> so it turns out that Jimmy, James, Jamie, 
Jamie is <laughs> dating Drago's girlfriend behind Drago's back. So Drago goes home and starts roughing up his girlfriend. And at this Which point, we need to talk about this scene because uh, I was really dis- distracted and couldn't focus on the the drama that was happening because there was a very small shelf hung above the bed that was crammed full of bottles of alcohol. And yeah. I was like, I was expecting at any moment she was going to push him into that and it would like come crashing down on both of them or on him. And like, mm-hmm. that's how she'd get away. No, you don't have a shelf there, of alcohol bef- above your bed. No, 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 it's like a real anymore. hazard. No, but it's like the shelf's only like two inches deep, but there's <laughs> like 20 <laughs> bottles on it. Right. Yeah. This is like a small bathroom shelf for like a candle and it's jam packed full, like a, like a fucking bar. Like it's packed full. Yeah. This is kind of, yeah, this is a, a little behind the scenes of the Saturday Night Freak Show. As we're watching these movies, every once in a while, Holly or Michaela will chime in with like, what is that fern doing behind the couch in like an otherwise supposedly dramatic scene? What's that lighthouse doing there? Yeah, I mean, those people were having a dramatic conversation on the couch while a fern is brushing the back of their head. Like, I was like, True. this is not comfortable. You would not want to sit no. on this couch with a fern touching your head like that. Yeah, Michaela's the one that pointed out, and I'm like, thank you, because that's all I could, that's all I've been staring at is this fucking fern uh add it to the list we have house islands we have ferns things that are distracting in movies yeah Yeah. well this doesn't go well for the girlfriend uh drago like uh strangles her to death trying to keep her from leaving to evacuate the town because jamie comes over and says before he strangles her to death we just need to real quick uh the jamie has come to warn her like first he like her Drago like attacks her and is like blah 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 you're a bitch and then and he rips her leaves. shirt and everything and yeah. he rips her shirt and then he leaves and then Jamie comes to warn her like you got to get out of town and then after Jamie leaves she's naked packing did anyone else have a problem with this well, because no. I don't <laughs> I actually I mean, had I a question a problem with because it, but- the way it was cut was that yes. Drago comes in you know, it's like you bitch, blah, 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 smacks her around. He leaves or he tore his shirt. So then he leaves. She takes her shirt off. Then she takes her underwear off. Then she's like standing there. Then we cut to the arrival of the cop. Jamie mm-hmm. saying, I'm going to go in there and talk to her. Jamie runs in. Then he runs back out and he's like, okay, she said she could put her stuff together in a couple minutes and be out. Then we cut back to the scene that we left where she's still naked. Try And I'm like, did right. Uh, Dude. They no. They just cut the scene in half, <laughs> put a scene in yeah. the middle, and then smacked it right back. There. Yeah, <laughs> Holly. Oh, so amazing. I, Holly, I don't have a problem with naked packing per se, especially in like a dire situation like this. The only <laughs> type of packing that I can really think of that bothers me is, and I see it on reality TV all the time: people who put their suitcase on the bed and then pack it. Don't put your fucking suitcase on the bed. That thing's gonna roll all over the fucking airport or wherever you're traveling to, and you're putting those dirty ass wheels. Uh, and everything on your bed. Don't fucking pack on you, your bed. You put the, the wheels on your bed. The wheels go like I see on the people side. all the time. Put the whole suitcase on the bed and pack it. Don't fucking well, do that. I will say, I put a towel down and then I put my suitcase on my bed. But I am, I do have to put it on my bed to pack. But I put a towel down first. But yeah, see, so you nah. can understand how dirty it is. So you're preparing yeah. for it. But God, I cringe every time someone just puts a suitcase straight on a bed. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. This is how you build antibodies. This is like this. I just right on the bed. Sometimes I no. just just no. lay on. No, I'm like Dexter, I to, man. I, I put down the drop That's cloth. All I need. You know, on the bed, the whole plastic, the whole room, plastic. Then you put the <laughs> disgusting. So I, I, I'm, I'm so no. You get dressed first and then you pack. Naked packing. No. Yeah, no. 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 A, yeah. I mean, what if you put the clothes you need to wear in the? the oh, go ahead. You're probably going to pack away the clothes you you mean to put on and you'll be like, oh, fuck, I got to get back in the suitcase now. Yeah. And, and, and not even that, that so. like, what if the emergency happens right now? Don't you wish you would have gotten dressed first? Because you probably don't need that suitcase as much as you need to be wearing clothes. Right. That's true. Especially since, like, zippers and, and clasp and stuff, there's a lot of skin happening, you know. Yeah. And be I careful, folks. She's just, she's just had two visitors in a matter of two minutes. She knows that she can't be naked because she's going to have visitors. Yeah, I know. And her doors are wide open, apparently. It's just Grand Central Station in there. People just kind of come through all the time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, her anyway. death, right? Because he strangles her to death. She is found by some helpful townsfolk who are cleaning the house or clearing the houses to make sure everybody has uh, escaped. And they bring her body back. And Jamie sees it. And the rage fills his face. And he heads off. And it's like, oh, shit, it's on now. Because he goes and finds Drago in the woods. And they get into a 10-minute fight. 
of kicking and punching and swinging uh, branches at each other. And it's very dramatic. And the music score is uh, just all over the place. It's oh, also man. an instantaneous fight because like uh, Drago's just hanging out in the woods with a beer and then a <laughs> fucking Jamie just zooms in. And he like jumps off his bike and goes straight for Drago. It is the, it, like you, Colin, you were talking about like this thing's on wheels. Like sometimes in this movie, they have no time for bullshit. Like, we're right <laughs> yeah. into it. It's like, it's on boom. Yep. We're into think, a fight. I think one of my favorite parts is that he just hangs out in the woods and that everyone in town knows where he hangs out in the woods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's the loner. Why is he drinking beer? Why is he always <laughs> in the woods with this right. fucking motorcycle? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Jamie doesn't kill Drago. He bashes his face into the ground a bunch of times, and then he takes off. Justice has been done. I was cracking up at this part, man. Something oh. about the the thud noise of his head hitting the dirt, and it just <laughs> went on for so long, I couldn't stop laughing at it. It was yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, I think we were all saying we were laughing at just the, uh, I mean, uh, it just the, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. The uh, We're going to go for it kind of mentality yeah. of like, Holly yeah, was saying this is like my backyard go trampoline fights. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We talked about that on, on a previous episode. My brother and his best friend trampoline fighting when I was like 12 years old. It was like it's that all over again. It's, yeah. But like for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. That's what made it so funny. And why yeah. I couldn't stop laughing is because like okay, it was already funny that he was hitting his face into the dirt. But then it just kept going. And the same thud Foley sound was used over and over again. <laughs> That's my favorite thing. I know I have a list of favorite things, but right up there with wrestling with inanimate puppets is the use of the same sound effect over and over again without any (laughs) differentiation. Always a classic. (laughs) Well, meanwhile, in town, what's going on is uh, this party is happening uh, and we got to get this, uh, you know, this party at the mayor's house is taking place, even though the sheriff has said there's a crazy killer out there. So the sheriff shows up at the party. And this is where we find out that the governor's got this very strange, uh, like assistant who doesn't drink and is all business. And it's like and the governor will take his uh, vodka with water, uh, you know, mild, mild. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the sheriff comes in and then they're like, you better not cause a, sh- a scene cinder. You know, it's like, I've got the governor here and you know, he's going to, you got to help him with his reelection and all that other stuff. So Jamie, pulls Lisa's gun out of the holster, fires it into the air to get everybody's attention. And then he declares in a loud <laughs> commanding a bold voice move to do in front of the sheriff, the mayor and the governor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? <laughs> like there's been a mine leak and no- noxious toxic vapors have escaped and the whole town has to be evacuated. And on that line, it cuts to mass hysteria as all these <laughs> bathers are jumping out of the pool <laughs> so good <laughs> such a good cut like, I, the editor may be like this is a shit movie but i'm damn proud of that cut. Yeah. The editor really went for it and i appreciate that he really tried his best yeah yeah it's uh uh it was h- hilarious <laughs> <laughs> um so of course that ends the uh, the mayor's political career. So he's out of the movie. Well, no, he's not. Sorry, that's right. We still have scenes with him as we're trying to get him out later, and he's all passed out, drunk. And the uh, the his uh, was that his secretary who was yeah. with him yeah. is trying to invite the doctor to join them in a party. And she won't leave, but it turns out that the night beast has actually made it into. Oh, that was the scene where I was like, if that alien's knocking on that door. Cause there's like, knock, knock, knock. I wonder who that could be. And she gets up and great <laughs> for everything else in this movie. He's got a nice, normal knock. It's like, <laughs> it would have been great too. If he was in like a trench coat and like a disguise almost, you know, right? the glasses with the nose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, she like, ends yeah. up getting uh, her like because the, the guy just eat, the, the alien claws at a lot of people and like, you know, rakes their faces open and there's blood pouring all over the place. Um, but uh, when the mayor roused from his stupor goes downstairs to find out what happened, the thing fucking decapitates him by grabbing his neck and like popping his head off. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. He turns he turns into an Asian dummy and then he gets his head ripped off, which is great. I love when they do that. 
It was pretty good though. Like I, <laughs> just the just the eyes and the. I'm pretty sure there was a tongue. Like ah, it was good. Like yeah. I enjoyed it. Well, good or not. I mean, I fake it. as hell, but you know, like right. it was okay. At least you're doing it. You're ripping the fucking guy's head off. Um, yeah. The. Uh, no, oh, let's not forget our our, our uh, slow motion. The the two doctors, like the woman oh, and the yeah. man, who end up in the basement. Yeah. We, I don't know where we are in the story, but we cannot forget to that the scene. elaborate basement plan. Yeah, oh the God. slow the slow motion elaborate basement plan. Because this is where they discover the. Slow motion the, uh, is really what threw me off here. <laughs> well, tell us about this scene. So, because this is basically the scene where science discovers the Achilles heel of the monster. Mm, indeed. Um, so I forgot what house are they at? I, I forget. They end the, up at, it's the doctor's house. Okay. They end up at the doctor's house. Him and the other woman. I forgot her name. That's Ruth. Uh, anybody? It, yeah. Ruth. What is it? Ruth. Ruth. Right. All right. So the doctor and Ruth are hiding from the monster <laughs> who's attacking. And so they run to the basement to hide from it. Um, and uh, the monster. Uh, wait, no, hold on. The doctor decides to tiptoe up the stairs to check and see if the monster is still there. And this is a real time tiptoe folks. Like they just stay there. I think I mentioned at this point, like a cheap movie means no cutaways. And so we were just with the doctor as he tiptoes up the stairs. And one of my favorite things, he opens the basement door to check and see if the monster is there. And they cut to a close up of the monster, like just his face. And you're like, how close is he to this guy? Yeah. They're just like, I don't think he saw me while I was up there. Staring at <laughs> so, so he tiptoes back down the stairs. He's like, I think we're fine. <laughs> and the monster uh, uh, starts throwing boards down the stairs. He breaks, he's trying to break through the door to the basement, but the easy workaround to actually destroying a door is just grabbing a pile of wood and slowly throwing it down the basement, which is kind of brilliant. Like that's a great workaround to it. They but, could have made him look a little more roughed up. It looked like a bunch of like Home Depot two by fours coming down the stairs. <laughs> it, it really did. It was uh, pretty amazing. Um, but at this point, like the doctor gets gets into his head, like he's going to try and electrocute the monster. <laughs> so he uh, slow mo runs. I think he slow mo runs over to the washer. He messes with the cord of it, uh, exposes the wire, starts dumping water on the floor, and this is all in slow motion and then ruth gets up and she starts running over to him to do we don't know what because the monster's in the basement yeah it's just standing there going it is like the the geography of this scene um i mean makes no sense look at the entire movie but the geography of this scene makes no sense because that monster is basically two feet from them in this basement and she slow-mo runs over there and like you said michaela i thought she was going to run into the electricity and that was going to be it which I was really hoping that would happen. Me too. Disappointed it didn't. <laughs> Especially because like that lady could not sit still and he was like, just hide and let me do my thing. Right? Just well, chill out for a minute. And what but, makes the plan even better? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I want to know that. Well, no, it was just the idea that like his plan is to, so the monster is in the basement and he's like <laughs> filling up a bucket of water right at the sink and throwing water on the floor. And then you're like, oh shit. Then he goes back to the sink and fills up another bucket of water, throws that on the floor, and you're like, oh, oh, shit. Then he goes back to the sink <laughs> and fills up another bucket of water. You're like, this is a really Panic. elaborate fucking yes. plan that you've got going on here. <laughs> then he hits the what? juice when the monster steps into it. And you get that awesome 80s electric you know, effect on him. Yeah, the, ar- yeah, the little arcing and all that. So- yeah. Yeah. It works. Chases the monster away. So we know monster doesn't like electricity. This is also a scene pretty much lifted directly from the thing from another world. I think also the shot where you said he went up to the uh, door and opened it and the monster was right there was also a nod to the thing from another world. There's a scene like that. (laughs) that, 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 that. And so the solution that they have to beat the monster is like the thing from another world. They're going to string up a bunch of electrical wires. This is also how you, you know, ward off Godzilla, right? With the high tension Mm -hmm. wires by wrapping them around the house. Now, before we get here to the climax of the movie, we have to jump back a little bit, right? Because, a relationship forms between the sheriff and his deputy. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Does it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel the chemistry, Colin. I don't know about you. I, it doesn't work for me. I don't believe this couple. I, I felt something here, but it wasn't chemistry. <laughs> 
You know, I like cringe humor more than most people, and this was too much for me. This oh, was so just, good. I felt bad for everybody involved in this situation. Yeah, yeah, I kind of felt bad for him, but I was, I could not see. I was laughing so fucking hard. Uh, so basically, I couldn't believe this scene. This yeah. is really fun good because I saw too much of that guy. Oh my god! Probably oh yeah, too much of him. Oh yeah, it's like this is uh, Don. We need, we need, you know, it's uh, we got to have some TNA in, in our movie, and so he was like, okay, I'll give this, you know, we're gonna do this it. This was the this was the awkward phone call to the hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, it was the scene. I'm surprised she was game for it, but like I said, Me different too. time. <laughs> um, so basically, what happens is as they're out hunting the monster uh, in the woods. Uh, the sheriff takes a fall off of a drop that he didn't see was there, uh, which was kind of amazing. It was just all of a sudden, woof, and he's down. Drop. And he ends up getting his leg, his thigh, inner thigh cut. Uh, he's able to evade the monster and gets back to her. And she, he's like, get me to the doctor. And she's like, well, we can just go to my house. He's like, anywhere. <laughs> go back to his house. And she's like, here, you sit on the bed. And then, uh, you know, let me get your pants off. And he's like, whoa, whoa, what? He's like, what, are you embarrassed or whatever? So, yeah, takes his pants off, dresses the wound, and then she's like. And then dresses him or undresses him. Yeah, well, she well, undresses she her. her. Yeah, she's like, oh, so yeah. I'm going to take a shower. You just wait here. And then she takes her top off and just stands there naked in front of him. And he's like, oh, okay, I, I guess I'll just stand here. And then. She comes back to check on him. Uh, presumably, no, no, no. Post no, she doesn't come back to check on him. She materializes back in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't Only walk back in. She's like, bruh, 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 bruh. How, "How you doing?" Yeah, I don't. Her hair wasn't wet. I don't know, but she was in a towel. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then she didn't wash her hair, Colin. She just put it up. There you go. Okay, true. That's how you do it. They she do had, that sometimes. She <laughs> had alien funk on her from hunting the alien in the woods or whatever. Um, and so then begin, begins the seduction scene, which goes on for a good like five minutes. It felt like of uh, just some amazing, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Cringeworthy, I guess is the way to describe it. You're just like, this feels so awkward. I, like, <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't believe how long it went. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and so it, many angles. Why were there so many angles? Yeah. So, yeah. This yeah. is the, yeah, this is the scene we got to shoot coverage on. Thanks guys. And it was, and it was just like, they would like pan to her standing there fully naked and then pan him staring at her fully naked and then back to her and then back to him. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> was, he, he's like, I've never seen a naked woman before. Uh, yeah. Don't know how or what to do. Yeah. Cause isn't that like uh, it dawns on the sheriff that like, Oh, you might actually be a beautiful woman. I always thought of you as my deputy. Right. <laughs> then but now uh, that I've seen your boobs. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. My feelings have changed. Weird. <laughs> we get those extremely so awkward uh, long shots of the two of them standing there embracing and him like squeezing her butt was the one I was like, you could hear the director off screen kind of in my mind going like, what breathing heavy? Okay, Howard, uh, why don't you grab her butt a little bit or like we got to spice this up in somewhere in the long shot? I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so now having consummated their love. They head back out. This one was like, they, there's a monster killing people out there. You have time for this? But as Holly it's, it's, said, it, you know, you got to live life. This is when you realize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. You got to live life, man. This could be the last I time feel, they have awkward I feel sex. Like, but I feel like the director related to this since his near-death experience made him realize he wanted to make movies. So maybe he's like, these people, if they're having near-death experiences, they're probably like, well, might as well fuck. Yeah. Grab you know? that moment when it presents itself because you may not ever get it again. So how the, do you use that? That's my um, that's my pickup line, or that's my move from now on. It's like, do you feel like we're gonna die soon? All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> <Should we? laughs> in in no near death experiences, like God, it snowed five inches out. I think we're gonna die. Yeah, yeah. That's not creepy at all, Sean. Nope, not at all. <laughs> all right, I won't use it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the big master plan that everybody comes up with here is that we're gonna get uh, Jamie. Uh, Lisa, Deputy Lisa and Sheriff Cinders are all going to go back to the doctor's house because the monster will come back there again, right? Because uh, 
it's also eating people. It's a vaporizing mm-hmm. some, but eating others, ripping people's arms off and doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it's going to come back. So they've wrapped the whole house with the wire, but then Drago shows up because we have to because tie this not? plot off somehow. And, uh, you know, Jamie has to be able to deal with, uh, Drago who beats up like in a long protracted scene beats up deputy Lisa. And I thought he had killed her too. Uh, but uh, apparently not. Uh, so what, yeah, she what just needed to change her clothes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so she's running around. This is the other thing. Bra is not a thing in this movie. Uh, so she's running around the, in a camisole or something. What do you call it? Yep. Cammy. Okay. Um, and uh, Drago gets killed by the beast. Right. And then everybody no. opens fire. The beast shows up, and there's like no. He Drago Jamie shoots him. Beast. Oh, that's right. Jamie shoots him in Jamie. the back. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And he finally gets his revenge. That's right. That's right. Because we got to, you know, if you set that up, that's how you have to finish that plot line. So there you go. Bravo. It's done. Drago's out of the movie, and then the uh, the night beast shows up and steps into. So this is one of those things where it's like you can't actually plug the, or hit the switch. They go and get like this giant. Um, was it a relay, a coil, electrical coil, a coil. from coil. a power yeah. station to hook it up to these wires? And they're going to have Ruth in the basement. When I yell out, Ruth, you flip the switch. Um, but the beast becomes entangled in it. And Jamie's holding on to the wires like it's too strong. It's going to get through. You got to like turn the juice on now. And so she flips the switch and she vaporizes Jamie, who sacrifices himself for the good of mankind and the monster, which explodes. At the end of the, of the movie. That's not bad. Did anybody else buy it in this scene? It seems like, oh, the doctor did. Oh, yeah, the beast killed the doctor. Beast right. killed the doctor. Yeah. And Ruth, Ruth, was like, Ruth, Ruth was very upset, yes. Ruth yeah. was upset, and then he was like, get it together, woman, basically, and told her <laughs> to go inside. And <laughs> yeah, and we finish on a... Uh, did any did anyone else when when they show Jamie's like charred corpse, it reminded me of um, 1989 Batman. When the Joker like fries that guy, it looked exactly like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. I was gonna say, I'm like, I've seen this before. Where the fuck am I? does this look familiar? That's it. Good call. That's what it looked like. Yes. Yeah, he's it's like beautiful. It's- like his eyeballs are the only thing left. I'm like, those yeah. would have popped. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know the makeup effects in this are not like not bad for not you know bad. a low budget That's why movie. He had his own magazine, Colin. <laughs> That's exactly right. There you go. He's like, <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to show you how we did it in the magazine. You could probably pick up that issue somewhere. Um, there was actually, uh, well, okay. So the movie ends with um, a, a shot of um, Sheriff Cinder and Deputy Lisa embracing behind the the, the wire. Right and, after Night Beast has, has exploded. Yeah. Yes. And we get to the, the full emotional toll of what's happened here and the do lives that have been lost settling. We on. do. Do they? Because those <laughs> guys look like nothing happened. <laughs> uh, oh, it did actually. I think that at the end, it, did it pull back and like pan it, it up like, to the stars? It, it floated up. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, there could be more night beasts out mm. there. Night, night beasts. Yes. From it? In the universe. Okay. What'd you take from it? <laughs> that the movie was over and they didn't know what to do? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like, it did seem kind of abrupt the way it ended. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, boom, monster's dead. The end. Get out. <laughs> like, but, well, yeah, again, again, appreciate it. Yeah. I was like, just like how we jump into the story, jumping minutes. out of it. I like it. It's a, it's a yep. good full circle. Book yeah. ends that shit. Yeah. Uh, Don Dohler, I guess, was famous enough to have a uh, documentary made about him. Uh, and that he was- did. Yeah. It's called um, Blood, Boobs, and Beast. Oh, that's him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's if if you're lucky enough to have this on DVD, it's in the special features. Uh, and this is probably put out oh, by huh? Vinegar Syndrome. Am I right? Because most oh, of the movies know. that we do here are probably pro- okay. <laughs> I so no, I would have figured. No, if it was, we would have had something better than a VHS version. Watching. Yeah, I don't crime. think Troma licensed out their shit. No, like that. I don't oh, think this great. is. No. I'll bet this has come out nowhere. Yeah, I'll bet, like you said, Holly, the DVD, or and but I'm guessing that's it. Yeah, the version yeah. we watched did have a Troma Films releasing logo on it, and uh, it was apparently sourced off of a VHS. Um, mm-hmm. 
Uh, Dolar, I think uh, you were talking about the Alien Factor. That was his first movie in 1977, and then he did make a Alien Factor two in like 2001. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was so popular, so popular. There were people so were popular. yeah, the people were hungry for <laughs> we're Alien calling Factor for two for 30 years or whenever he made it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alien Factor I mean, is apparently yeah. about a alien uh, ship full of uh, species on their way to an alien zoo that crash on Earth and get loose, and the townspeople have to deal with it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't see much about it. From my understanding, Night Beast is the main cult classic for for Mr. Dollar. So um, it's his best work, is what you're saying. May, I, and from my understanding, um, you may have seen a clip of it if you've seen the 2018 Mandy that it is playing in the background of that movie. Um, mm. That's what I remember. That. There. Yeah, that's what they're watching. Uh, yeah, yeah. Before the shit goes down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He died. I believe what was it 2006 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 2006. Mm. Yeah. And oh, he was also. Um, he became. Like professionally, I guess like, you know, he had his filmmaking thing, but he was like the editor of uh, several newspapers. And I think like yeah. the Baltimore Times Herald or something like the editor of the paper. Yeah, he was he was pretty prominent in the newspaper. Well, I think he wa he worked in Washington at one point. Like he was he had a pretty decent career as, as a writer and editor, not just a well, not just as a filmmaker, because gold, <laughs> pure gold. <laughs> Wow. So there you go. You have to check out that documentary uh, if it's available somewhere. So, all right. Uh, any any stray observations about Night Beast before we head to the mailbag? I think we observed it all, Colin. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to introduce you to... Maybe even more than we wanted to. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, we're going to... Uh, this is the interactive portion of our show. Uh, we're going to read some of your mail. In order to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman. And his name is Igor. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. We need to get him, him one of those silver space suits. Oh, for sure. Ooh, he'd look yeah. good. Yeah. That'd be nice. All right. It's like in we'll the it. 80s, all alien men look like they belonged in a 70s disco. I, I think there's, sure. there's probably a reason for that, like uh, to keep in the heat of the and so you don't freeze. I'm sure there's some actual <laughs> mm -hmm. science behind it. <laughs> it's yeah, silver. It looks science. spacey. Yeah. yeah. Based on a true story. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the way that you can get a hold of us, uh, listener, please uh, follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash freak show. Sorry, my cat decided <laughs> to jump on my lap right at that moment. How about uh, Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. Maybe you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, Night Beast. Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in, he must have seen the trailer. Um, Y'all sure about this? <laughs> no. Are we ever? Are we ever I mean, sure about what we're doing? I mean, I knew nothing, so who knows? Uh, Jimbo. I was pretty confident. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious, Holly, like how this uh, got on your radar. <laughs> um, yeah, I am too. Holly, I wasn't too confident about like 30 minutes in, so I'm glad you were confident. <laughs> uh, Jimbo Weiss writes in, he says, this is one of those movies where there's simultaneously a lot to say and nearly nothing to say. The introductory invasion scene is terrific in some absurd plot decisions like the wife beating subplot or the out of nowhere cops in love are cheesy fun. Plus the movie might as well be called day beast for based on how much the monster attacks in full daylight. Mm. That's the sequel. We got Day Beast, Space Beast, <laughs> Lava Beast, Twilight Beast, the the potential, Dusk Beast, Underwater Beast, Sea yeah. Beast, <laughs> Sea Beast. Wait, has that been made? <laughs> well, That's like a good one. Yeah, <laughs> copyright. If it hasn't been made, twenty twenty one Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Owen Johnson says, "Motherfucking Night Beast! This movie is amazing. The sound effect for the aliens' gun is awesome." How many people did this alien kill? Like five minutes after his ship crashes, his kill count is past five. And P.S. Nicholas Cage and Andrea Risenborough are watching this in Mandy. So there you go. Yep. Um, 
Last week, we watched Nothing But Trouble. And look at the faces. We did. Look at, wow. Uh, Jason Madsack writes in and says, this episode was a lot of fun to listen to. I don't think there's been this much anger and passion for a movie since Travis was around. My feeling and nostalgia <laughs> for this film pretty much echo Sean's. And if the theme this year are hate picks, that's going to piss off the rest of the freak show. I can't wait for the Goonies and Howard the Duck episodes. Oh, uh. Oh, Goonies, man. no. Howard the Duck, you never know. I hate I'm, I'm not Duck. saying it's on my list, but you never know. <laughs> well, Travis I Legler. Mean, oh, sorry. There would be a lot to talk about with Howard the Duck, but please, no. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No. What? Those are the what's summoning that, words. What's that, Michaela? Michaela. Let's bring it, Sean. Sean <laughs> that's how you do <laughs> there it. There you go. See, Holly's learning. <laughs> you should all be like, we would love to see that. <laughs> Well, Travis Legler says, I'm not going to lie. Hearing Sean tell others, thank you for accepting their share of responsibility for this movie being shown and having that followed immediately by go fuck yourself, Sean. <laughs> Maybe I spit up my drink a bit. Sean's my boy, but that was funny as hell. Uh, that whole that whole thing was pretty funny. <laughs> um, Michael Whitaker says, only someone who's never really been to New Jersey, specifically the Atlantic City area, would think inbred hillbillies live out that way. It only gets more expensive the closer you get to Atlantic City. Is it weird that what I thought of this film when I saw when I thought of when I saw the hot dog scene was that should have been steamed and grilled. At the very least, they'd look less gross. <laughs> Yeah, yes. it, I mean, true, but clearly that's how Dan Aykroyd likes it. So ah. that's yeah. yeah. The only way it could have been worse is if he'd wrapped it in a slice of bread. Yeah, I don't. I I, I truly I truly don't think he likes it that way. I just think he knew how gross it was going to be. Yeah, it's like not cooked yeah, all the that, way. No, so that's the, what I mean. I mean, casing I is think, still hanging off the ends. I think Ugh. the character <laughs> likes it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. D- they should <laughs> when they. Uh, uh, Next time there's a Ghostbusters thing, they should, in the ghost blowjob scene, they should cut to Dan Aykroyd sucking down that hot dog and then cut Make back that to fan Ray. edit, Sean. Make that <laughs> fan edit. That would be funny. Coming Don't soon. you dare sully Ghostbusters not gonna. like that, Sean. Don't uh, you no, dare. No, I would never. I would never. <laughs> Don't you dare. Uh, Brandon Palmer writes in, he says, I saw this one movie when I was like 11 because my cousin had seen it before me and said, it's funny. The guy has a big old dick for a nose. Obviously, she has a flawed sense of humor and perspective. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is a lot yes. of things. Funny is not one of them. Uh-uh. <laughs> well, we put up a photo of Dan Aykroyd eating the uh, bratwurst in the you, Chronicles. Of- you, Colin. You put up the photo. <laughs> the editorial I Kayla and Holly are going to take credit for that. <laughs> you know, Sean's pushing off responsibility again for this movie. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, yeah. well, I'm just saying we're all complicit in this. But we're not. We're not. <laughs> uh, well, the Chronicles of Not Riddick said the picture is grotesque. That's great makeup. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Steve Carney says, I love nothing but trouble. I really hope it can get a Blu-ray release in the near future to replace the ancient DVD. It's uh, from Warner Brothers, so we're waiting for Warner Brothers. 30 years. It. Yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean, the world's gone to shit. What, like, you know, wouldn't surprise me if a, you know, three disc Blu-ray fucking <laughs> criterion version of this movie came out at this point. Yeah, when Sean's all getting for Christmas. 30 years, it is the anniversary of this year. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh Joe LaHoho says, I'm not even sure you can blame drugs for this movie. Yeah, I no. don't think so. I don't <laughs> think Dan Aykroyd needs drugs. I just think that's how he is. Yeah, I agree. I mean, or maybe he took too many during his SNL days, and this is the after. <laughs> well, uh the week before we watched the movie. No, is it? Yeah. The week before we watched Never Too Young to Die, Nelson mm. Nascimento writes in and says, I just want to say, because Robert Englund was a minor part in that movie, he says, I'd be all in for Robert Englund in The Phantom of the Opera or The Adventures of Ward Fairlane. He wants us to cover those on our show. Uh, Grant Parrish said about, uh, we posted a photo of Gene Simmons in this big share uh, uh, style costume. costume. Yeah. Um, and he says, Linda Carter wore it better. Um, I actually went back and looked at it. Uh, Linda Carter was in, uh, like it was a variety show and she dressed in that costume and sang a kiss song and she's surrounded by kiss lookalike dancers in it. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, they stole that for the movie. Variety shows are weird, man. Love it. Yeah. 
Uh, Brett Williams says uh, props for the obscure kiss trivia right on that episode. There you go. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, You're welcome. Travis Legler, he wrote in again about this one, and he said, because uh, on the, that episode, there was some disparagement about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And Travis Legler And there says, will continue to be disparagement. Well, he says, after hearing some of the comments about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I have to admit it's far from a perfect movie. However, I laugh when people bring up the fridge scene after Temple of Doom, where three people jump out of a plane with nothing but an inflatable rubber raft to save them. He says the fridge scene, scene didn't bother him a bit. I agree, Travis. I I have not watched that movie since it came out, so yeah, Yeah. it's worth a rewatch because we were kids when we saw it. I was like, sure, he jumped out of a plane with an inflatable raft and skied down a mountaintop. Well, and we we talked about this off mic, but I think part of the problem with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is that everybody went into it kind of being like, really, like, are we doing this again? No one asked for this, so I think like our bandwidth for ridiculous stuff like that was a lot lower in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm seems, not a and Temple of Doom's not my favorite anyway. So, and it seems like their bar for ridiculous was a lot higher with that movie than it had been in the other movies. But yeah, um, the previous week we watched a movie called Rad. Stephen Ritchie wrote in and said, "If you didn't watch this as a kid when it came out, you don't have any business reviewing it." And that is a fact. Mm. So the fact that most of us liked it no. doesn't count. All right. Well, maybe he was talking to me. <laughs> You're welcome Maybe. to your opinion, sir. <laughs> Maybe. Congrats on having an opinion on the internet. Uh, well, the prior to that, we watched a movie called Killer Workout. Gary Macon wrote in and said, "I just watched Death Spa, which we have talked about at length now, without yeah. having actually yes. watched it." Uh, he says, "Which you should totally review." And it says in the end credits that it was produced in 1987, even though it says 89 on the IMDb and 1990 on Prime. So it wasn't a ripoff of Killer Workout which was also made in 1987. So there you go. Two killer spa movies came out the same year. We have watched one of them. And Death John spa has watched half hour. Is, of the I, other. I, I, yeah. Half hour. Of the other one, because again, like I said, it's coming. We're just saving it. We can't have it so close to each other. So maybe, True. maybe summer, the summer of death spa. <laughs> we can't wait all right so now we're going to go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie which was called night beast we're going to start with mm, kayla uh, what'd you think so i mean i've seen a few trauma things before and they're not good and like the ones i've seen have been really like grating and annoying and like basically almost unwatchable so going into this i was Definitely concerned. Uh, even only being 82 minutes, I was like, if it's a really grating, annoying 82 minutes, it'll be long. But it wasn't. It was actually like it went for it and it tried its damnedest. And I can really appreciate that. It's also kind of inspiring in a way because it's like so grassroots and so homemade. It's like, damn, I could make something like this. Um, and I appreciate that. So you're that saying too. it's inspirational, Michaela? Yeah, it is inspirational. <laughs> Uh, it, it really is. And I think that it has a lot of admirable qualities when you look at it from just like how it was made perspective, you know, um, and like it's a big, stupid rubber monster killing people like that. Like, what more do you want? Like, you know, and like it it does show the gore. Like, I was surprised by how much gore we saw. I definitely didn't think we were going to get any. I thought it was going to be like like Night Claws where it was like all cutaways, you know. Um, but no, it didn't. And it killed kids, which got major <laughs> bonus points for me. Um, you know, there's some, kids. Like, and I laughed hysterically at several, several times during this, you know, um, I really wish I could forget, you know, the love scene. Uh, I, I really wish I could just bleach that out of my brain, but I don't think it's going to happen. So I would definitely recommend it. I think like if you listen to the freak show and you know what, like kind of ridiculous stuff we like to watch, I think like this is would be a really fun like midnight movie or drive-in experience with like a group of people. It'd be so much fun. Cause I mean, I know I was laughing so much on my own, but if I had actually watched it with you guys, we would have all been cracking up. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely recommend it. And if I'm going to rank all three of the these night oh, yeah. movies, yeah. I think, I think night killer is the best. And then this one night beast and then night claws is number three. <laughs> yeah. Night so, claws can fuck off. <laughs> right. Sean, what did you think? Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I was shocked, shocked, I say, at how, uh, at the fun I had watching this movie tonight. Cause I had, uh, I only knew of what the monster looked like. I knew nothing else. Um, and, uh, it didn't seem promising. Like I, I was like, oh, I don't want to watch the night beast. Cause, uh, who knows, <laughs> but holy shit. Like it's, <laughs> 
no, no, Kayla, you say the 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 love scene you wish you could bleach out of your brain, but would you recommend this movie without that love scene? I wouldn't be able to. I, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, there's still so much like is, all the other all is, the other stuff is the reason why I'm recommending it. That's true. That's very true. There is a lot of other stuff in this. There's surprisingly like fun effects in this. Um, again, the monster is just a dumb rubber monster, but you know it's fun. Um, and he does disappear for like good chunks of the movie. Like there's a good 20, 25 minutes where he's just not there, but they make up for it with the most awkward movie ever and the most awkward love scenes ever. And it's just, it's, it's so weird. And, and it, but it's funny. Um, I was shocked again that I had a good time watching this tonight. So I'm definitely going to recommend it. Uh, surprisingly so, but yeah, I think you should definitely watch this. It is, it's so weird. You're going to laugh your ass off at it. Uh, so yeah, Night Beast, I recommend, um, it's going to be number one, obviously, uh, Night Killer and then Night Claws. I think, I'll bet that's going to be all of our rankings. May, well, no, because you did Night, uh, Killer first, didn't you, Michaela? Yeah, Night Killer first. Night okay, Killer I'm, was, I, fried chicken and French fries, Sean. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> only, I, I'm only ranking it this way because it's, uh, Night Beast is more, uh, recent in my mind, but it's going to go number one, uh, then Night Killer. And then fuck you, Night Claws. So there it is. Uh, Colin, what did you think about Night Beast? Well, I kind of love this movie. I mean, uh, I, <laughs> I had so much fun watching it, like you said. And I think, you know, for the reasons that you guys have just said, it, it's uh, a very earnest movie, right? Where it's trying to be entertaining. Yeah, the acting's wooden. You got to get past that. Or, or just kind of like, that's part of the fun. You know, you can't actually, yeah. maybe we're saying we enjoy it ironically, right? I don't know if it is what was intended, but it's like, it's an efficient movie. You know, it moves it like a clip. I mean, it, it goes, it, it has the fun gore. It has the TNA. It has explosions. It's got shoot, uh, shoot em ups. I mean, it's got interplanetary war within the first 10 minutes of the movie. Uh, only it didn't have a car chase. Mm -hmm. needed a car chase um, <laughs> um well i had that awkward love scene to, to you know to to cover up for the right car there's chase. your car chase yeah um and the you know yeah the uh, the mass hysteria at the pool um i don't know i uh, yeah i i might have lost for words there i like i really uh just enjoyed the experience of watching it and i laughed hysterically often through it so like i said the entertainment value is very high i don't know if i actually want to go see other don doler movies maybe right. maybe we're missing out here maybe we got to see the uh i think they said like his first five not so much his later uh movies which started to become he got a different producing partner and apparently he didn't like the direction it was going into more in like mean-spirited kind of texas chainsaw massacre stuff it sounds like he was a guy who liked you know aliens from space coming to earth and causing havoc and that kind of stuff so um Maybe I will check that out and uh, the documentary <laughs> who knows, but I just, you know, I mean, I guess that's it. It's, it's a bad movie, but it's like one of those gold standard bad movies. That was so much fun to watch that. I would definitely uh, recommend that you check it out. Oh, it wasn't a trauma movie though. They just uh, distributed it. It was, uh, <laughs> okay. he was self-financed yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Himself, it was like, so. wasn't like awesome productions or uh, it's like awesome production. films productions. I'm like, yeah. Ooh, you're really putting it out there right at yeah. the start. Aren't you? Yeah, it was, it was his own, his own production company. <laughs> yeah. And later he became like cinemagic productions or something for the other one. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, pleased to be introduced to the cinema of Don Doler uh, <laughs> who had previously uh, escaped my attention so there you go um, well I guess yeah recommendation Holly would it bring us home how, how oh yeah sorry my rankings um, I think this one was my favorite because my memory is I had like peak entertainment value with this one uh, Night, Night Killer is uh, pretty close to that one and then like somewhere like several layers of concrete you know earth you know or <laughs> down past the concrete to the granite rock uh that's where uh night claws resides uh holly how'd you find this movie <laughs> yeah. um yeah so uh, so we had obviously you had challenged me before to to bring a, a third night movie to complete the trifecta and i made a conscious effort to try to make that happen. So I, I just started Googling and I got down a rabbit hole and I found this gem and I watched the trailer and 
from what they showed in the trailer, I was like, holy shit. Why have I never heard of this movie? This looks like gold. And then I looked into it a little more and I was like, okay, well, are the best things in the trailer? And then I was like, this just sounds, it sounds like the hidden gems that we search for. So I was pretty confident that it was going to be a masterpiece. And I'm so glad that I went with my gut and picked Night Beast. Um, This was a lot of fun. Even like reading about, you know, Colin, you know, I know that you did a deep dive. Uh, he was sending me some stuff earlier about stuff that he had found. And it's, I don't know, he just, Don Dollar seems like an interesting guy. And just reading about this style of backyard movie, like it's just, there is something really charming about it. It is, it is, he's a, he's like a, he's a purist in that way. You know, like he wants to bring you the creature. He wants to give you the gore. He wants to get, like he, he gives you the bad acting. Like he doesn't care about those parts he just wants to give you the entertaining factors and i think there's just something really genuine and heartfelt about that and i I think this movie really delivered on everything that i was expecting from it um you know like i said just from the trailer there's lots of gore in the trailer and i was like holy shit like this is amazing and then i was reading someone's review and they're like he pops someone's head off i'm like yes so we're doing this (laughs) And yeah, it totally delivered. It was everything I hoped it would be. I was like, I know that the acting is going to be shit. I know it's going to be a terrible story, if you can call it a story. But I was hoping it would be just enough stupidity that we would find it hilarious. And it was. And it did not disappoint. So I'm very glad that it delivered on all those all those things that we look for in these hidden gems of, of a movie. And um, yeah, obviously, I'm going to recommend it. I had so much fun with it. I'm really glad you guys did too. Um, you know, sometimes we take chances on these things, but I was confident in this one. So <laughs> I'm glad I completed the, uh, the trifecta. Uh, I think this, this is a good time to conclude. I don't think there's going to be a force. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Potentially anyway, I don't think you can top this one. Um, uh, so my order, I'm going to agree with you guys, um, that maybe it's because it's fresh in my memory, but I think I just had fun quicker with this one than I did with night killer. I think night killer took me a little bit to get into it. Um, but obviously it's very close. It's very, very close, but I'm going to go night beast, night killer, and then night claws can fuck off. Cause that movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so is. yeah, there you go. All right. Well, awesome. Uh, that means that's a, <laughs> it's freak show approved. <laughs> freak show approved. <laughs> we need, all right. People are going to go like, why are you recommending these movies? <laughs> huh? we, need, oh, we, yeah. Mikhail, we need a rubber stamp design. that says free oh, show yeah. approved. Oh yeah. That, that's, yeah, yeah, sure. that's, that's, that's solid. <laughs> that's good. Uh, awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, now we're going to find out what we're watching next week. We don't know. It's going to be sprung on us in a minute. Bye. Michaela. What are we watching next week? We are going to watch a subgenre that I think is really untapped, and that is ski resort slasher. We're going to watch a movie called Iced from 1988. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> this sounds good. This sounds good. I've never heard of it. Not either. Uh, it it never got released on DVD, so we're going to watch a VHS transfer that's on YouTube. So oh, no. I'm okay with it. Oh, it's okay. the only way I can find this movie anywhere. <laughs> so. Have you seen it before? No. Okay. All right. I've never We're all seen going it, but I scrubbed through the transfer and it looked okay. I didn't see any major tracking issues. So. Okay. All right. Ski resort slashers next week with ice yeah. on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us as always. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>